hello everyone, uh, good evening. Uh, so we're just going to wait for a few more people to join um, and then we'll get started. I think we've probably got everyone now. Um, so my name is Tom, Dr. Bamford, I'm the Medical Director of Care Fertility in Manchester. Um, so today we're going to go through a, a presentation that just talks generally about fertility and how we can help you, some of the steps that are, are involved. Um, and then we're also going to talk a little bit about donation and surrogacy. But before we do that, we'll just um, watch a little video about care uh, that just gives quite a nice introduction. Family. It's who we are and who we're always going to be. It's the important little moments the big emotions, the beating heart at the center of our world. It's the journey that we take there, together, one step at a time. Family is the one thing we'll always care about the most, because we believe that family is for everyone. And through our care, we'll do everything we can to make your dream real. We don't just care, we are care. Uh, my name is Professor Charles Kingsland and I'm the Group Clinical Director for Care Fertility. At CARE, our number one belief is family for everyone. And this means we do everything possible to help everyone start or grow their family. We know that nothing is as important as family, and that's why we care so much about wanting to give every patient that comes to us their best chance of having a baby. Of course, families come in all shapes and sizes. We get heterosexual couples, couples of the same sex. We get uh, single patients wanting to, uh, to start a family. We get NHS patients. When you have a fertility problem, there should be facilities available for you to get the best advice and the best treatment readily available to give you the best chance of having a baby at a time in your life that is best for you. We will use all our knowledge and experience combined with highly individualized treatment, personal treatment to help you have the family you are longing for. Unbeknown to Gemma and I, uh, we both carry a gene um, a deafness gene. We actually have a daughter um, who, who was three but who was born prematurely deaf and we were given the option and chose to go down a fertility treatment to kind of avoid our second child having that same gene. We were very lucky in the fact that um, the clinic was only down the road from us so we felt there was one around the corner it was had good reviews. We just felt it was good for us, didn't we? The whole package made us just feel really comfortable that actually going with care was the right decision. So the team, the team that we worked with at Care were unbelievable. They were caring, they were sensitive, they were compassionate, empathetic. Um, and even when I was ringing out with um, I was feeling pains down one side, that the reassurance that they gave me, uh, they honestly do hold your hand every single step of the way and I feel like they live the journey with us. So I've had several treatments with care and I now have a baby and that's taken um, a number of treatments, fertility treatments, different alternatives, different medicines to try and get it to work for me. I have always said I would recommend Care Fertility. I would recommend them for the, the comfort factor that I received, the friendliness, and just my, I think the word is, my faith in Care Fertility. That's great. So um, we'll move on now just to discuss a few different topics relating to fertility and what the process looks like. Um, and just to say as well, we're now over 60,000 babies. That's a bit of an old video. So, um, and we've got quite a few more clinics than, than when that video was created as well. So the, the clinics that you can see on the left-hand side are the ones that we have in the UK. Um, we've also got one at the moment in the USA and, and three in Spain. So we're a really big expanding service. And I suppose 
what that brings to you as the patient is that we have a real breadth of, of knowledge and experience across the group, whether it, you've got quite a unique and individual um, set of circumstances or, or background or, you know, a, a fertility problem that might need addressing or particular expertise, uh, expertise, we do have the knowledge across the group to be able to support you with, with specialists with different interests. So the first part of any uh, process or fertility process is to make sure that you've got the right diagnosis. And, and there's a few ways that we do this. So, uh, and, and it's very individual to you as a couple, whether you're in a same sex uh, relationship, whether you're in a heterosexual relationship, whether you're a single uh, uh, parent, um, then it is very different as to the test, of course, that you're going to need. But as a general rule, if you're looking to use your own eggs in treatment, then you would need an AMH blood test. AMH is a hormone that is released on the follicles in your ovary, so that where your eggs are stored. So it gives us a good indication of what your egg store is like in the ovary. So this gives us information really on what your prognosis would be, so how well we think you would do in an IVF cycle. So that's why we use your, your AMH. Um, a pelvic ultrasound scan is again uh, useful for those wishing to, to carry a pregnancy um, and we basically look at your uterus, your ovaries and again that gives us an, an indication of your ovarian reserve and we just check that there are no other abnormalities within the uterus um, or the ovaries which can point to a certain problem. And then of course a semen analysis for those providing sperm for, for treatment. So these tests and then these are the basic tests that we then do and that's discussed with your doctor at the consultation and it might be from that the those initial tests and the history that you give us so the story uh, or you know we we find out further information about your your menstrual cycle and, and what investigations you've had done on the nhs if you have had any on the nhs all of this is is discussed at the consultation and uh, often that is enough to point to a certain diagnosis it might be at that point that we ask for further investigations um, or at least a, a further blood test perhaps to rule out certain other things but most commonly at the consultation we've, we've got an idea of what's probably going on um, and having said that there are of course couples that come to us that have no fertility problem uh, and actually are just coming to us because they want to start a family so uh, the the key examples of this would be same-sex couples whether that's male or female and of course you're you're coming to us to use donated gametes so so that situation is is slightly different but it's important in those situations just to make sure that there is nothing else going on before proceeding uh, with fertility treatment so there are many ways that you can uh, communicate with care when you're in treatment so the patient portal has everything in one place so it's where we send you all of your consent forms your documentation your letters after consultation uh, and all your patient information leaflets so after your your consult the the doctor will say what are the most important patient information leaflets for you and then we'll send it for you for you to have a read uh, in your own time so uh, first of all i'll just go through the uh, the ivf process this this is what most um patients that are coming to us uh, end up uh, having or wanting but not all so we'll talk about some of the other uh, processes afterwards so uh, the ivf process involves um about 10 to 12 days of stimulation injections so they're uh, an injection just beneath the skin uh, that we give in a, a small needle and, that, and that's for about 10 or 11 days and the, the process then makes the follicles in your ovary grow so uh, in a normal menstrual cycle you would normally release one egg in that menstrual cycle in an ivf cycle what we want to happen is for you to develop lots and lots of follicles for us to be able to collect those eggs so we monitor you throughout that cycle usually more towards the end of the cycle then predict when we're then going to do the egg collection so once we know from the scans that you, you're ready for an egg collection we give you one last injection which is called the trigger and that's normally taken quite late at night and then after that trigger you then come 36 hours later for the egg collection okay uh, and the egg collection is very similar to the scans um a, a female patient would have had already so it, a scan probe is is put inside uh, using sedation so that you're comfortable 
uh, and then we basically use a small needle that goes through the ovary and then we we, we remove all of those um, eggs that are in the follicles so about eight percent of the follicles contain an egg so this is just uh, showing some of the videos that we have that we can send you once you start this process and they teach you how to take the the drugs um, and this is just the monitoring that you will experience through the scan. So that is Rima, one of our uh, medical directors at Birmingham. And this, the, the scans are usually monitored with the sonographers and nurses. Um, and then this is the process of the egg collection. So you can see here um, the uh, transvaginal scan and then a needle this time comes out the end of the scan machine through the vaginal skin and into the ovary. And that's why we give you sedation for the procedure to, to ensure that you're comfortable. So then on that day of the egg collection, um, if you're having a treatment with your partner in providing his sperm, then he will do a sample on that day. And that's the one that we will then use for the treatment. So we do the fertilization later that day, and that can either be with IVF or ICSI. So ICSI is the sperm injection. Um, and if there is any abnormality on the, the semen analysis that you've had done at the start, typically, if there is a significant abnormality, we will we will um, advise that you go for the sperm injection. Okay. Uh, if everything is fine on the uh, on the analysis, then we'll just do what we call conventional or standard IVF, and that's when we mix a set concentration of uh, a man's sperm in with the eggs. So we clean and prepare the sperm, uh, and then we mix that in uh, with the eggs, and then we check the next day uh, for how many of those eggs are fertilized. So uh, the next part of the process is uh, probably the, the cleverest part of the process, and that's when we're growing the embryos in the lab. So um, the important thing really to realize from, from this part of the IVF process is the eggs that you have at the start of an IVF process is very different to the embryos that you have at the end that are available for use. So there is a big drop off rate, and that's what you have to be aware of. So it doesn't come as a surprise at the time. So the eggs that you have, we expect about 8% of those to be mature. Then we expect about 70 to 80% of your eggs to fertilize. And of those that are fertilized, we, may, we expect about half of those to make it on to day five. So day one and then five days later is what we want them to become uh, a day five, what we call blastocyst. So a blastocyst is a more complex embryo. It's split into two different parts, the bit that becomes the baby and the bit that it becomes the placenta. And then what we then do, once we've got those blastocysts at the end, is we uh, grade them, or the scientists do in the lab. So they will look at the, those two different parts and they tell us uh, which uh, of those embryos uh, are to put back first. Now, you can probably just see on the bottom right image, that's a blastocyst there. In that middle image, the bottom right section is, is there a blastocyst. Um, so we would grade those different parts of the, the blastocyst and then select the best one. And then we freeze any spares for you. There are different ways that we can select embryos and uh, over that. And one is this that you're seeing on the screen now, and this is CareMaps AI. So this is a very clever algorithm where a picture is taken of your embryos every 10 minutes in the lab. And that forms this video. And that video is then analyzed by a computer uh, using artificial intelligence and it tells us which is the best embryo. So it gives us more information about your embryos. The nice thing is that you get to keep these videos after your treatment. So if you have a baby from the treatment, it's quite a nice thing to have to look back on, I think. Um, and then also it gives us more information about the rest of your embryos. So this has won multiple awards, uh, this type of uh, selection algorithm, or sometimes it's called time lapse. Um, uh, and we have lots of data to support its use. So typically, uh, it is something that we would recommend in care to be part of your IVF cycle uh, if you can do. The gold standard, I suppose, of embryo selection is, is something called pre-implantation genetic testing, and that's what uh, is, stands for PGTA. Um, so PGTA, you can see on the right side there. So that's when we take some cells from just outside the embryo. Oh, you can see it happening here. Um, so we take some cells from outside and these cells then uh, get sucked up into a tiny little pipette. So you can't see this with your naked eye. Um, 
and then these cells then go off to a lab in London and they tell us whether that embryo is genetically normal or not. So this is important because we know that the main reason that IVF doesn't work is because we put back embryos that are not genetically normal. So if we can make sure that when you're putting that embryo back that it has definitely got all the right chromosomes, then we know that your chances of live birth or pregnancy are, are significantly higher. And it also reduces your chances of, of miscarriage, which can for many patients be important, particularly those that have gone through a pregnancy loss already. So that's the uh, embryo selection element of the process. And as I said, those that are good enough quality uh, for freezing, we freeze for you so that all the spares we freeze. And that's what I often say to, to my patients is that you need to think about IVF, not just as that first transfer, but as the whole process. You, you're creating, hopefully, not everyone creates more than one embryo, but many patients do create more than one embryo. Therefore, you have to see your chances of success over all of those embryos, and it might not happen first time, and that's why the freezing process is so important. And the vast, vast majority of embryos survive the freezing process. Only about 2% um, don't. We freeze in a PGTA cycle, so where we're taking those cells to determine that, that whether it's genetically normal or not, that embryo. Uh, we freeze all of those embryos. So those patients choosing to have that um, would not have a fresh transfer. So we wouldn't put any embryos back in that IVF cycle. We freeze them after the biopsy. We wait for the results, which takes two or three weeks. And then you have the embryo transfer on the cycle after that. So that's, that's how that would work. Typically, PGTA is recommended for patients that are older than 35 but particularly older than uh, 37. And that's because we know that the percentage of your embryos which are genetically abnormal significantly increases with age from 35 up until 42 and onwards. But that again is something that would be discussed at consultation um, with you to give you your specific chances and your specific uh, prognosis. So the embryo transfer process um, involves um, a, a really small catheter. Uh, so the catheter is threaded through the neck of the womb. So it's almost like a smear test uh, if, if uh, the female having the treatment has had a smear test. So we put a really small catheter through. It doesn't usually cause uh, any pain. Uh, and then that catheter is then used, uh, put in the right place in the uterus and we use an ultrasound to make sure that we're doing that. And then we inject the, the embryo. Okay. And the nice thing, after going through all of those injections and everything, the nice thing is to see that on the screen because uh, it makes you feel like you're eventually getting somewhere and, and it's a nice process to be both you and your partner if you've got a partner to be part of. So I'll just now go through uh, IUI. Uh, so IUI is... Um, a popular, probably the most popular option for same-sex female couples as a first um, management option. Not all choose to go down that route, and and generally, what would happen if you are a same-sex female couple is that you would be, you would, we would discuss both options with you and give your individual chances of success with both options. We'll discuss the process, and then you, as a couple, would decide what what is most suitable for you. But we also use IUI uh, in other couples as well who choose uh, to go down that route. And really, we will discuss whether that is appropriate given your certain individual circumstances at a consultation. But for those that do have IUI, what we do is we monitor your menstrual cycle. So we're trying to detect when your body is releasing an egg. Sometimes we may give you medications to try and make sure that you do release an egg at the start of the cycle. And then in the middle of the cycle, we then start scanning you to detect that ovulation. And once we've detected the ovulation, we then plan the IUI for a day or two later, depending on your set of circumstances again. But usually the day later, we, we, we do the insemination. And the insemination is similar to the embryo transfers, really small tube that we thread through the neck of the womb. And then we inject the sperm at the top of the, the uterus. The uh, IUI success rates are lower than IVF. Um, so in general, uh, we just would recommend thinking about uh, 
IUI successes over a course of treatment of three to six cycles rather than IVF, which is a higher success rate per, per cycle. So um, shared motherhood is a, another treatment option for same-sex female couples, and it's really popular, and I think it's actually a really nice um, thing to do as a couple. It's, you, know, it's, you can see why it's popular. So in, in, in this process, one of the partners would uh, be the egg donor, for want of a better word. So um, they will donate their eggs after an IVF stimulation process to their partner, and then the partner would then carry the pregnancy. Okay. Now, uh, whilst that sounds really straightforward uh, in many ways, because it's very similar to what we've just described, from a law point of view, it is a little bit more complicated. So we need to ensure that the right that, that you both remain uh, the legal parents of, of the child that you're conceiving. So that's why if you're going through a shared motherhood process, it has to go through with uh, the donation team as your support and they will ensure that all of the right consents are completed uh, beforehand and they'll also of course support you in getting your your donor sperm which i'll go through in a second so i'll now just uh, spend some time just going through donation at care um so we have our own egg and sperm banks um and both are, are very popular and we have quite large sperm banks and egg banks and that's because like we like I showed you initially we do have a, a large group and each of these clinics are recruiting donors uh, and are um, you know having receiving donations from from individuals now it doesn't uh, mean that you have to use a care sperm bank in particular for for your treatments and, and therefore you can use an external provider if you wish so some of our uh, external providers that we work with are listed below but it has to be one of those in the list because we have to ensure that they're screening their donors as good as we would uh, in order for us to be happy to use their their sperm for treatment okay so just make sure you're using one of their external uh, one of these listed sperm banks with the egg bank we only have our internal egg bank uh, we don't import sperm uh, we don't import eggs sorry um, or have the ability to use external egg banks um, with egg donation, we have won a, a, lot of, a lot of rewards for our successes on uh, how we freeze these eggs. So the way that it works for our egg donors is that they come, they would have a stimulation cycle uh, and they would then, we would then freeze their eggs. Okay, so that means that you have a bit of peace of mind in terms of the number of eggs that you're getting in your treatment. So how some clinics would work it is that you're having what's called a fresh donation. So you don't know until the day that that donor has had their egg collection, how many eggs exactly you're going to get. You also have to synchronize your cycle with that donor if you're having the transfer yourself. Uh, of course, the situation is, is slightly different for a surrogate, but if we're using a surrogate who's carrying the, the donated eggs, then again, you'd have to synchronize the cycle. So as you can imagine, that logistically can become really challenging. So the advantage of using frozen eggs is that they're, they're already here frozen in one of our clinics. You would have access to the egg bank um, and that is essentially a website that lists the characteristics that we've got available in the egg bank. You would go on there and select the characteristics that you need or want. Uh, and then that would get, then get shipped to your home clinic. And usually from that point until starting treatment is around four to six weeks. So it doesn't take very long. It just really depends how long it takes you to select some eggs. Um, the donors are all um, what we call altruistic donors. So they're doing it for the, for the goodness of their own heart and because they want to give something back. Um, and that's what's really nice about, you know, I've met, met quite a few donors and they are really doing it for the, the right reasons. Now, it, of course, it is really a big thing for them to do, but we also have to ensure that they are healthy enough um, to, to give you the, the con biologically conceived child. So we screen these donors for um, genetic conditions, which are common to their ethnicity. Uh, and we also screen them for a wider range of infections, which could be passed on um, 
than we do in the standard fertility patient, for example. So these are all screened. They have an extensive genetic history taken. They have a, a consultation with a specialist nurse who goes through um, their full medical and family history. So all of these things are, you know, any concerns are screened out in the process. So that's how uh, the egg donors are recruited. Um, in terms of the process it, for the recipient of those eggs, it's actually a lot more straightforward than an IVF process because all we really have to do is prepare the lining of the recipient's womb. So we either do that in a natural cycle or we give medications, usually in the form of tablets with estrogen and then progesterone pessaries. So actually what you have to go through um, from a physical point of view is a little bit less than an, a fresh stimulation cycle. Um, our success rates from donor eggs are very good. <clears throat> so per embryo transfer, the, the clinical pregnancy rate is in the region of 45 to 50%, but on average, overall, the, the group is around 45% per embryo transfer. And you're given a set of eggs, if you remember. So therefore, any spare embryos, you would also get to keep. And if that first one doesn't work, you'd then come back to try the second embryo. Okay. So let's just go through um, surrogacy as well. So surrogacy um, is slightly different, in, of course, than, than what we would say is the, the standard fertility patient. Um, and the reason, of course, is that there's three, there's, well, there's potentially three parties involved. So we've got what we call the intended parents. So they're the ones that are needing to use a surrogate. And the, the need to use a surrogate can be very, very varied. So, of course, it could be a same-sex male couple, or it could be, uh, the contrast of that could be a heterosexual couple who've been on a really difficult and challenging journey who now need to move to using a, a surrogate. So um, it really depends on your individual circumstances, but we do give you a huge amount of support in, in the, the surrogacy team, and it is managed by a specialist team who guide you through the whole process. So if you are interested or, or needing surrogacy, then on our website, there is a form that you fill in for the surrogacy team, and then they will contact you individually. You'd have an initial meeting with one of the surrogacy nurses or midwives, and they will go through the process. They'll take a bit of a history. They'll check whether your set of circumstances is, is suitable, um, and then we would then proceed with a, a consultation and so on. And, and in surrogacy, the reason that it it has a different team and it has also a different uh, pay scale or a, a different fee schedule than, than the rest of fertility patients is that it is a lot more involved. We have to check that your surrogate is a suitable surrogate to carry your pregnancy and that's really, really important. So lots of, lots of patients that come to us wanting to be your surrogate might not be the right candidate to, to carry your pregnancy because of their history or because of something that we found on a scan. So that's what the doctor that sees you um, and your surrogate will do. They'll assess their, their risk for, for surrogacy um, and they'll talk to you about your chances of success with, with that surrogate and so on. So um, we've also won awards for our surrogacy team. Um, so I think a, a few a few years in, in a row, we've won the, the surrogacy award. So it is um, a really great team. Um, so I'll just go through the support that we've got at CARE. Oops. Um, so we've got obviously our uh, amazing nursing team and doctors. Um, but we've also got, um, sorry, we've also got uh, links on our websites for different support groups that you can join and that's some of them are Facebook groups and so on. Uh, there's a men's group on there. So just have a look on our website for the different support sources that you can get. All patients can also get uh, three uh, free counselling sessions as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm sure that's available in all clinics, uh, but you should be able to get access to free counselling as part of your treatment. Uh, because we are, of course, dedicated to making sure that your well-being is, is the best it can be as you're going through what can sometimes be a bit of a difficult journey. In terms of financial support, we also have our care pay team, um, and they will be able to, the number is on the bottom of the screen there, they will be able to talk you through the different packages that we have available. 
So we have the IVF multi-cycle package, which is probably the most popular, uh, and that includes two cycles of IVF, plus all of your frozen transfers. We have refund packages, which give you a certain percentage of your money back, should it not be successful. And we also have the donor egg refund package. And these are the, some of the sources uh, of support that I was discussing before. Uh, social media, care pals are our admin team, essentially. So they're the, they're the team that are really important in supporting you to get onto your treatment um, uh, pathway. We also have in, in certain clinics, uh, care value. Um, so this is a basic fertility package. So it's not a doctor consultation, it's a nurse led consultation with one of our specialist nurses. Um, and you have to have or meet certain eligibility criteria to get this. So this price that you're seeing here is extremely good value because that includes your drugs and your consultation and everything, uh, which is a significant fraction of the cost of, of of what it can sometimes cost. So just if you're interested in that package, um, just chat to the team and they'll let you know whether you're eligible or not. So uh, we also have some upcoming events and these are the ones in the next few weeks or so. So just take a note of these uh, and you can also speak to our team and they can give you the dates if you're in, uh, inter interested in registering. So time for questions. Um, so uh, I've got a few questions in the chat. So what is the process from day one of your cycle to taking norethisterone and then injections to egg retrieval? So the, the person asking this question is really asking about IVF uh, and collecting eggs in your own IVF cycle. So some clinics schedule their um, cycles with norethisterone. Um, so we use a tablet before you take your injections to control when that period before the injections comes. And the reason that we do this, if, for example, I, I um, work in a very big clinic in Manchester, if we relied on everyone's natural cycles, that might mean on some weeks, everyone's period came on a Friday. And of course, we would then end up with 12 egg collections on a Friday which is no, no good for you or, or, or us. And you as patients want to be on a list where you know, you're on a nice list with five or six patients. So that's why we try and spread it out throughout the weeks. And it also, has, it also ensures that we've got the, the staff with the right skills on the day that you need your egg collection. Um, the other advantages of norethisterone scheduling is that you will get a list, um, a protocol which tells you your individual date. So from your day one, it'll tell you your date for your scan, your egg collection, your embryo transfer, which becomes difficult if you're not using norethisterone scheduling. However, not of our, all of our clinics work like that. Some clinics will just go off your natural period. So it's worth getting in touch with the clinic that you're wanting to have treatment with or speaking to our GEM team, and they might be able to direct you as to what the process might look like for your individual clinic. But if you are using norethisterone scheduling, you phone with day one, and then after that day one is when we then make sure you, you've got your medications, you've got your treatment plan, you've signed your consents. Day 16, you start your norethisterone. We tell you when to stop it. And once you've stopped it, you then start your stimulation injections five days later. You have 10 to 12 days of stimulation injections, and then 36 hours after your last injection, you have your egg retrieval. Um, I hope that explains and answers that first question. So the second question is, I've had three failed embryo transfers. Why do embryos fail? What can things, what things can be done differently? Uh, and I believe this has come from an, an NHS patient. So, of course, you know, it's, it's really sad and hard for you uh, as a patient to go through three embryo transfers and each time to be doing that test and it's negative. Now, all I can say is that the vast, vast majority of patients that persevere with fertility treatment do eventually get there. It depends on your in individual set of circumstances. But there is this term which you may have heard of, which is called recurrent implantation failure. So this is when you've had um, typically, the definition is when you've had at least three good quality, that's important, they have to be good quality embryos put back, but they've not worked. Um, and at that point, after three, uh, sometimes a doctor would think about investigating things further. 
So there are things that we can do. We can do some blood tests. We check your vitamin D, your thyroid. We um, can check for clotting problems within the blood. And sometimes we can also do a biopsy of the endometrium to make sure that we're putting the embryo back at, at the right time in the cycle. And that's called an endometrio set, endometrio test. It also gives us information about the bacteria within the endometrium to make sure that you've got a good amount of healthy bacteria. So all of those things would be discussed at a consultation, but there are extra tests that you do have uh, available. Now, a lot of these tests come back as, as normal. And, and the reassuring thing is, um, and I want to reassure you, is that the vast majority of cases is that the reason that the embryos don't implant is to do with the embryos themselves. And that is the vast, vast majority of cases is to do with the embryo. So even if in someone that's less than 35, half of their embryos are genetically abnormal. And of course, that increases up until the age of 42, 43, when 90% of your embryos are genetically abnormal. So that means they could never give you a healthy baby. So it's a one in 10 chance if you're 40, 43 of that healthy baby from that euploid embryo. So that, that's often the reason in many circumstances, but this is something to discuss with your results uh, in front of a doctor to just uh, obviously guide you a little bit further. Um, second or third question is, are there any ways to improve uh, sperm morphology, motility as we're considering ICSI? So uh, sperm morphology in particular can be improved through diet and lifestyle. So um, I would recommend looking at a, a good male fertility um, supplement. Examples include Impril, so I-M-P-R-Y-L. Uh, that's often a recommended one or well man facility supplement. Um, just have a look at something like that. They contain zinc and other antioxidants, which can be really good for improving the morphology of the sperm. So that's how they look down the microscope. Um, it's probably worth repeating the analysis before um, having treatment or, or having your consultation just to make sure it's not improved. It does take about 12 weeks to make any improvement in sperm because that's how long it takes to produce a sperm. So really what you're seeing in the samples now is the product of what happened in your lifestyle 12 weeks ago, or it can be. So that's how it, how it long, how long it takes to clear the effects of perhaps maybe a, a bad stint in lifestyle or, or stress or something like that. So that's also worth, worth considering. Do you recommend any uh, specific supplements such as coenzyme Q10 and others? Um, and we want to give our results the best chance. Um, so um, there are loads of fertility supplements out there. Um, it's a little bit overwhelming, uh, even as a medical professional and a fertility specialist, it is overwhelming. And, and, and I come across patients kind of on all kinds of supplements. The ones that have the most evidence and the ones that we, we recommend to everyone are folic acid and vitamin D. And that's to ensure that you have a healthy pregnancy and it reduces your chances of pregnancy um, complications and obstetric or what we call late pregnancy complications. So those two are really important. Um, the other additional ones that you can take, coenzyme Q10, which you've mentioned there, is probably the most popular one and probably has the most evidence out of all of the supplements. So I would recommend that one. Often, if you're getting a um, fertility supplement that's a bit of an all-rounder, that's not just the basic uh, fertility supplement that's preconception, then it often does have these things in anyway. So I would say that that's probably all that you need uh, and that you don't necessarily need all of these weird and wonderful supplements. However, having said that, um, you can look at our Zeta West website, uh, and Zeta West is a part, is part of our group of clinics, and they do have really nice uh, information about different uh, fertility supplements that you can take, uh, and some of them come in packages and that kind of thing. They also do uh, consultations for um, nutrition, which might be of interest to some people. Um, last question is, if my BMI is just under 35, then during my treatment tips over what happens, can you continue? So um, in order to have fertility treatment uh, and for us to be licensed to do that, in most of our fertility clinics, your BMI does have to be below 35. Um, so it would be really important, both for your chances of success, but also for the, the safety 
of your pregnancy because we know that pregnancy complications are significantly increased with a high BMI, um, that, it, that it is lower, but I know it is really difficult. So um, ideally you'd want to get it, kind of try and get it well under before you're starting. The important thing really, the main important thing is the, the stimulation. So the egg collection, it definitely would have to be below 35. And that's the point that it's definitely checked because, because of the sedation and everything that we're giving you in, in the procedure rooms. So I don't think I have any more questions, but I'm just going to double check. I think that's everything. No, there's no, no other ones coming through from, oh, they're just typing. Okay, here we go. How would same-sex males get started? Um, so it would be through the surrogacy uh, on our website. Uh, hopefully, we might, if you message us, we might be able to share the link to it. Um, there is the surrogacy form that you fill in, and then that will give you an appointment with one of the surrogacy team, and then they'll go through everything with you. Uh, it depends on, on what stage in the process that you are in, in the surrogacy journey. You might have not found a surrogate at all, uh, and it can take some time, sometimes two or more years, to find a, a suitable surrogate. Some people uh, come to us with a surrogate, and they've already done that part of the process. Um, and some people haven't started looking, and, and at, uh, at the stage where they just want to create embryos. So. That's where we would help. We'd help you create the embryos. And sometimes it can help actually help you find a surrogate if they know that you're ready to start and you're good to go and you've got embryos in storage. It can make the, um, the process a bit quicker. So just get in touch with our surrogacy team and then you can, you can book in then with one of the doctors. They'll go through a sperm um, analysis with you and they'll go through your questionnaire and then book you in. Okay. So I think that's all the questions that we've got time for tonight. Um, thank you all for joining. The GEM team are online. So it's the number that's in really tiny letters at the bottom there, uh, and they'll be on uh, until eight o'clock tonight. So any questions or if you'd like to book a consultation, that's the number to go to. All right, thank you for, for joining. See you soon. I'm Shah and I manage CARE's new patient inquiry team. We're here to make it easy for you to take your very first step in your fertility journey. We completely understand how nervous and excited you might be when you contact us. This is the start of a life-changing process and hopefully the beginning of an amazing future as a family. So it's really important that we give you all the information you need. That way we can help you to feel much more comfortable and confident with your treatment. Whatever you need to talk about, I want to reassure you that no question is silly or trivial. We appreciate that there might be a lot to take in at first, but don't worry, we'll send you a clear information pack about the treatments you're interested in, and we're always here for any follow-up queries. My team also manage inquiries about care pay, our range of funding packages which are exclusive to care fertility patients. When you're ready, we can book you a virtual consultation with a specialist fertility doctor from your local care clinic. So if you want more information, have a question or wish to book an appointment, call my team. We want you to know that we are here for you at every stage of your fertility journey. We say that our patients become part of our care family and it's true. We care deeply about you and your future and our teams are here to make sure you have all the support you need. The reason why we, we chose CARE was just, one, the care that they give you, um, the aftercare that they have available to you, and the fact that they um, offer different forms of um, treatment um, and they listen to you. One thing that I've identified and what I've noticed when speaking to other um, people that I've met within the infertility community is there's a lot of clinics out there that don't necessarily listen to you as the patient. It was kind of a one size fits all, but with care that didn't seem to be the case at all. They took everything into consideration and they listened um, to your concerns. They listened to you as a person and they put a, a package and, and a process in place that will help you and, you know, fingers crossed will give you that positive result from the at the end of it so without a shadow of a doubt if I had to go through it again I would definitely go back to care. Oh the support at care was brilliant. It was brilliant yeah I mean the nurses were brilliant for us you feel so 
looked after. Yeah, and cared looked after and cared by by the whole team. We felt that they did care, and it wasn't just for them mm. getting something out of it. It was actually that ongoing support. Them. Yeah, and they wanted it to work for us. Care Fertility started over 20 years ago with one clinic and the goal of helping patients achieve their dream of family through truly personal care and the most scientifically advanced fertility treatments. We've grown from that one clinic. We now have clinics across the UK and many people have become part of our care family with over 50,000 care babies in the world. But one thing has and always will remain the same. We care for each and every patient we care about your dreams of having a baby and we put our heart and soul into every aspect of what care can offer you. To provide you with the best care possible and to give you your best chance of success and treatment, we look to our own care family. From our consultants, embryologists and nurses to our admin teams and specialist fertility counsellors, we've also put a lot of thought into how we improve each and every step of your journey, which will no doubt begin with lots of questions. We know that thinking about starting IVF can be daunting for some, and that's why our care, patient services and support teams will always be there for you whenever you have a question, need advice or simply want someone to talk to so that you feel completely confident and in control of your fertility options. So yes, we have grown and developed over the years, but care and empathy are always at the heart of who we are. We are passionate about changing lives and creating futures, and I hope that this shines through in everything we do and everyone you meet at all of our clinics. We don't just care, we are care. One in six people need help to grow their family. You're not alone. And our care family will do everything we can to help your dream of family come true. There are over 50,000 care babies in the world today. And behind this success is our promise to make more heartfelt dreams of family become reality by ensuring our care goes into everything we do for all our patients every single day. You will receive truly individualized treatment, a patient-centric approach with empathy at its heart. We understand how nervous and excited you might be about getting started, but you can be assured of kindness, empathy, and all the information you need from our new patient inquiry team. We are all here to make it easy for you to take your very first step in your fertility journey. Call our team on 0800 564 2270 to learn more and book an appointment. We don't just care, we are care.